Well, we're going to go ahead and, and talk about this warfare that we are in. I just quoted Ephesians 6, 12. I want you all to recognize there are forces, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, wicked forces in high places or heavenly realms. The scripture is very clear what we war against. And the, this warfare is a, uh, is a battle that we're engaged in. But we also recognize that Jesus won the war for us. He defeated death and hell. He defeated Satan and the demonic realm. They're defeated foes. So when we as believers in Jesus Christ recognize who we are in Christ, then we can walk in victory in our life. But I want to tell you that that doesn't mean that you'll not uh, be tempted. You'll not uh, have uh, situations arise in your life where you have to stand on the word of God. Because these are battles. We're still in this world. We're not of this world, but we're in this world. And being in this world means that we have to deal with the forces of this world. We have to deal with this natural world that is all around us. And this natural world is being manipulated and controlled by a supernatural world. Entities that are all around us. A, a dim another dimension. Uh, you know, Garrett came out and helped me with some work uh, at the, <clears throat> around my house the other day. Actually, I was working on a, a rental property they have there on the property. And we were talking about the supernatural realm. And uh, one of the things that is very uh, prevalent in our society right now is aliens and UFOs. UFOs are a big deal. In fact, the government is supposed to be disclosing the information that they have, the secret information that they have on UFOs. Now, listen, I'm not one of those guys that's a UFO, believes that aliens come from a distant planet, uh, but I do believe that there are UFOs, and I do believe there are aliens, and those aliens are from a different dimension. Those aliens, I don't care what, you know, in the past, in past history, they've been called fairies, they've been called imps, they've been called demons, they've been called all kinds of different things. Now they're being called aliens. But what they are, they are demonic forces that have come to kill, steal, and destroy. I'll talk more about this because I believe that there is a great deception that is about to be uh, unveiled in our world. And aliens have a big part of that. Because you see, if somebody believes that these forces are from another world, that they have great power and great wisdom beyond anything that humans have, they're coming with a message, that message will not be the message of the cross. I can guarantee you that. So we, got, we need to guard against all these principalities and powers, all the things that uh, uh, create a roadblock for us to, to draw close to God. Listen, the occult is a big problem in our world. When people, astrology, uh, not astrology, uh, yeah, astrology, right? Astronomy, yeah, astrology, yeah, astrological Readings, tarot cards, fortune tellers, uh, people who uh, will speak into to your life, so-called, and give you readings about what the spirit world is saying. People who talk to the dead. This is all demonic. This is all ungodly. And this is thing, these are things that the church of Jesus Christ tend to play with. And when we play with those things, we're in trouble. We're getting ourselves deep into ungodliness, which opens the door for demonic realm 
to begin to manipulate and control and oppress even God's people. Now, you, you need to hold on to your seats this morning because I'm probably going to shake your theology a little bit. Uh, okay, are, are you ready? <laughs> Fasten up because we're going to talk about these things. We've studied the origin of Satan, demons, and the mission of Jesus Christ. And we know the number one mission of Jesus was to reconcile mankind to Almighty God. Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, separated man from God, and uh, separated uh, themselves from communion with God, and then separated all of mankind from communion with God. That was the sin virus that we talked about. We are infected with that sin virus, and the only remedy for that sin virus is not good works. Good works won't remedy that sin virus. Um, Religious observance will not remedy that sin virus. There is only one answer for that sin virus, and that is to be inoculated by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the vaccine. It's the pure blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus. But I want to tell you something. Religion will tell you that that's all there is, you know. You just go through the religious motions, come here on Sundays, worship God uh, in your way, do whatever you want to do, and then go back out there in the world and there's no power. There's no power to overcome disease. There's no power to overcome uh, any sickness. There's no power to overcome addictions and, and, and the, the stress of this world. There's no power in your life. But that's not what the Word of God teaches us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is so cute. <laughs> and that's a big surprise. <laughs> yeah, oops, <laughs> didn't expect that. <laughs> All right. All right, let's get back, back to the Word of God. Uh, and I don't even know where I was at that point. But anyhow, we know that there is power in the name of Jesus Christ. There is power. Listen, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was poured out on believers. And there was power that came into their lives. They, speak, they spoke with other tongues. They, they, uh, they laid hands on the sick and they were healed. There's power in the name of Jesus. They cast out devils. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about coming against the supernatural powers, the demonic forces, and getting rid of them out of people's lives. We can do that. Thank you for that patty kick. Amen. Amen. Come on. Let's get so excited about this stuff. All right. Well, look with me in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. I'll give you a chance to get there on your device, your, your Bible, whatever it is that you have. Glory, thank God for technology. Uh, just make sure you use it correctly. Don't be uh, searching the web while we're in church. Amen. All right. Don't want to have to rebuke anybody. Second Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiveness, slanders without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. And from such, turn away. Listen, it is so very important that we recognize that it is very possible to have a form of godliness. To have a religious godliness. To have uh, something that looks like godliness. But it is not. 
Just having a form of godliness means that you go through the motions. But you really deny the power of God. This world that we live in really wants to deny the power of God. The church of Jesus Christ today, in many cases, are denying the power of God. They're not believing any longer that this word, this Bible, is a holy, inerrant, infallible word of God. So rather than preach the real word of God, we water it down. And we try to make people comfortable. We want them to feel okay when they come to church. You know, if somebody's seeking the Lord, we, we, don't, we don't want to run them off. Well, let me tell you something. We're not going to run people off when we tell them the answer to their sin problem is the blood of Jesus. If they're truly seeking the Lord, if they're not, if they're just seeking some kind of uh, uh, comfort, then yeah, we'll probably run them off. But when I speak the true word of God and say, you're a sinner and you need to be saved by the grace of God, I don't care what sin it is in your life because we're all, we've all come from that sin nature. We need to be delivered. When I say that, I'm telling you what the word of God says. And that's powerful. And it will set people free. But there is bondage that the enemy puts upon people. And I want you to understand something. This is the word of God as we speak it, when it's spoken, it's a spoken word of God. It is so powerful to set the captives free. It says men will deny the power thereof. Jesus came for more than just pie in the sky and a sweet by and by. He came to set the captives free. And according to 1 John 3, 8, he came to destroy the works of the devil. Look at what it says there. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. He came to destroy the works of the devil. The works in your life, the works in other people's lives, the works of the devil all over this world. They're destroyed in Jesus' name. Does that mean that they go away? No. It means that they're defeated. But in order to defeat them, then we have to, to walk uh, with the power of the Holy Spirit in our life. Jesus destroyed all these works of the devil. I think too often people have this image of Jesus. You know, he was a meek and, and mild uh, uh, savior. He walked on the face of the earth. You know, we've got to be careful because the world tries to conjure up this image of Jesus that he never spoke anything that would offend anybody. You need to read the word of God. Jesus was very offensive to the people who were out of the line. He always embraced those who were seeking him and who wanted to change their life and who wanted answers from him. But when religious people came to him and, and uh, were haughty, high-minded, and acted like they had all the answers, Jesus was very offensive to those people. He called them whitewashed tombs. He called them serpents, snakes. Not exactly the kind of vocabulary we're supposed to be using in this day and time, is it? But I want to tell you something. The religious people of this world today, the leaders, the religious leaders, are leading people astray. There's a lot of things being said that is very ungodly. Let's get back to focusing on the kingdom of God and the works of the kingdom and get the kingdom established we don't have a, this worldly kingdom. It's going to pass away. Focus on the kingdom of God, on the things of God. In Acts chapter 10, verse 38, it says this. And you know that the God, you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who are oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Oppressed of the devil. The Greek word here, which I'm not even going to try, attempt to, to pronounce because it's about that long, means to exercise harsh 
control over someone. It means to oppress them. The Greek word rendered devil here is diablos, and it's a title. It's a title of Satan, uh, the devil. It's, speak, it's talking about a personality. It's speaking about the God of this world, the prince of the power of the air. He's the one who is in charge of all the oppression in this world. He's not the one that personally does all the affliction, but he's, he's over it all. He has hordes of disembodied spirits destined to, to roam the earth. And they're, of course, we've already established their purpose is to kill, steal, and destroy. Here's what Matthew chapter 4, verse 23 and 24 says. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all six people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were d- demon-possessed. Now, we're going to look at that. Epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them all. That's uh, the New King James. The King James Version says there where it says demon possessed or possessed of the devil or possessed of demons. This, this Greek word, daimonizomai, daimonizomai, means to be under the influence of a demon. Now, the, as I told you, I was going to, I may shake your, uh, theology just a little bit this morning because let me give you some background of what I'm, I'm talking about. When I was a newborn believer in Jesus Christ, I hadn't been a believer for very long. This crazy guy that I used to run around with, uh, his last name slips my mind, Andy Some of you know him. Well, anyhow, he, he, was a, he had been a believer for quite a while. And uh, he said, hey, I want to take you to this service tonight. I had no idea what he was talking about. So Tammy and I said, sure, we'll go. We went to the Salvation Army. And um, at the Salvation Army, this guy got up and he started talking about demonic forces and demonic forces controlling people, and not only people, but also having influence in Christians' lives. And I don't know about you, but my theology that I was taught was that the devil cannot possess a Christian. And I still believe that, that Christians are not possessed, because you see, the word that that is uh, translated possessed here is not, does not mean possessed, it means demonized, or it means that a certain area of your life is being manipulated and oppressed by, an in, by the enemy, by a demonic force. Full possession is impossible for a Christian. You have the Holy Spirit inside of you. However, what it appears to me, I, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me tell you what happened, it's because this set me on a, a, a mission to try to figure this thing out. We were in this service, and at the end of the service, he invited people to come forward and be uh, prayed for. And he started praying for this one lady, a young girl. And uh, when he started praying for her, a manifestation of a spirit came forth. And it it was obvious. It was not her. It's, it was a man's voice or a male voice, I guess I would say, coming out of her deep voice, coming out of her. It was not something she could have faked. It was real. It was happening. And when that happened, I got up and ran up front because I wanted to see what was going on. Tammy got up and went to the back. <laughs> she said later, she said, uh, I was afraid that thing was going to get on me. So, well, I, I don't think there was any possibility of that. I went up and, and I wanted to see what was going on. And as I was there, I heard this guy, this guy 
casting this demonic force out and speaking to it. And uh, he, and prior to, to him praying for her, uh, he had asked her if she was a, a believer in Jesus Christ. And she said, yes, I just received, recently received Christ as my Savior at a, you know, some kind of a uh, revival or something. So as he was dealing with this, he actually asked this demon, he said, How, why didn't you stop her from becoming a Christian? He said, I didn't have the power to do that. Couldn't do it. That, that demonic force said that. And, it, and he went on and kept, kept uh, dealing with the, the spirit, casting it out. All right, now I'll tell you this because that really did shake my theology. That a Christian could actually have a demonic force uh, oppressing them. And this is not something, I don't want anybody to be afraid. This is not something that happens all the time. That all of us have demonic forces. This is very rare. But what happens, people have trauma that takes place in their life early on. And it opens the door for the enemy to oppress a certain area of their life. I'm, you know, I'm not even going to try to make a, uh, build a theology around this. I'm just telling you what happened and what I have uh, experienced and what I saw. And when this happens, then those, that particular individual needs some help. They need some deliverance from that particular area that they're oppressed in. That's why addiction is so powerful in people's lives. It's not just your body. You have a supernatural force that is trying to oppress you and cause you to be addicted to whatever it is, pornography, uh, drugs, or, or um, sex, or any. It can be anything that you can be addicted to if you have that. Now we, you know, the, the psychological uh, community would refer to that as an addictive personality. Well, yeah. I believe it is. There's a personality there that's causing you to be addicted. Uh, these, these are hard words, isn't it? I mean, because these are things that, that most of us are, you're going to reject this right off the bat if you have the theology that a Christian cannot be oppressed by the devil. However, there's something I want, I want you to understand. Uh, the power of God is great. And he does deliver, and he does set people free in Jesus' name. And we'll give you a couple other uh, um, examples of my experience with this. Now, we don't base our belief in anything on experience. But if experience lines up with the word of God, then that's okay. Recently, I was listening to a pastor. There's a revival going on in his church uh, and it's, within this revival, they're baptizing people. And they're even baptizing not only new believers, but they're baptizing, you know, if somebody feels like they need to be baptized, re-baptized, they're baptizing. You know, it's, just a, it's just a part of what they're doing. Now, uh, you know, there's a lot of controversy about stuff like that. People always try to say, well, that's not of God. God's, if God's in it and people are being saved and things are taking place, people are being healed and delivered, why do we uh, create controversy about, around the things of God? Let's just let God be God. Every major revival that has taken place in the world has had controversial events take place. Someone is always on the outside, usually some kind of religious uh, entity or religious group, religious person who wants to say, well, God doesn't work that way. Well, God can work any way God wants to work. If we'll just get out of his way. But here's what he said happened. I'm just reporting what he, he reported. In his revival, he's had numerous people receive Jesus Christ, come out of lives of sin. One gentleman received Christ as a personal savior, and he was a homosexual. He asked, he came forward, and he said, I just want to be free. I need to be free from this. So they felt like God said, baptize him. So they put him in the, the baptismal, 
They said as he got in, this horrible stench came up from the water. He said it was, it was so terrible that it was almost unbear, unbearable. A horrible stench. And then they baptized and they put him under the water. And when he came back up, he said, when he came up, the stench was still there. They said, baptize him again. They put him back under the water. Brought him up. The stench was still there. It just kept permeating from this guy. Now, it wasn't body odor. I want you to understand where I'm going with this. This was a supernatural stench. Odor. That's what the enemy smells bad. I want you to know that. He smells really bad. There's an odor, a stench that goes up to the nostrils of God. You see, the, the enemy is all about sin, and God hates sin. God can't stand the smell of sin. He said, baptize him again. For the third time, they put him down. When he came back up, he jumped up and he said, I'm free. I'm free. And he said, the stench was gone and a wonderful, beautiful odor of the Holy Spirit came in this, that sanctuary. Now, I'm, like I said, I'm just reporting that event. But this, once again, was someone who came to know Christ as personal Savior, but yet the enemy still had a stronghold in his life. The enemy still has strongholds in some believers' lives. But we have the power in the name of Jesus Christ, to set the captives free in Jesus' name. I want to talk about tactics. I don't know how far I'm going to go. I'm going to get with this. But we're going to begin talking about this, and there's so much involved in this, so we're just going to keep going with this series. Uh, if you're getting tired of it, I guess you'll just have to stay home. But I'm going, to, I'm going to continue talking about tactics. Ephesians 6.11 says this, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. I, I love this. We can put on, we have an armor, we can put it on, and we can stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, that, uh, that's the New King James. The wiles uh, actually could, uh, comes from the Greek word methodia, which uh, means cunning arts, deceitful crafts, trickery. Uh, we derive our English word methods from this Greek word. So what we're talking about, we must stand against the methods, the deception, the tactics, the schemes. You know, a lot of different words that could be used there of the enemy. He has scheme, he's scheming all the time. You got to understand the enemy, Satan and his forces are very smart. Now, you know, a lot of people make fun of, of Satan. But, but look, listen to me. He's real. And he's, he's a supernatural being. And those beings that we know of as demonic were supernatural beings as well. They're, they're where, uh, well advanced mentally than human beings because they were supernatural. All right, Let me, I'm trying my best to, to help you to understand this warfare that we're in, and I want you to know how serious it is, and we gotta stop playing games with the enemy. I read a joke this week, I, I guess I'm gonna share it. Um, this guy dressed up, uh, he was on his way to a costume party. He dressed up as Satan. Uh, he was a big guy, 6'4", 275 pounds, big dude. And he was on his way to this party. He was walking, and a storm came up. So he, he saw the only place he could go, there was a little church there. The door was open, and he jumped in that church. And it so happened that that church was having a revival. 
And when he opened that door and walked in, dressed in his Satan suit, the whole church got up and went out every door and window and crack that was in that church. They left, except one woman. She got caught in a pew and she couldn't get out. And she was back there trying to get out. And he, he thought maybe that, you know, something had happened to her. Uh, he was concerned about her. So this big old guy dressed in a Satan suit walked over to her. And he was just standing over there, and he said, can I help you? And she looked up at him. She said, Satan, I want you to know, I've been a member of this church for years, but I've really been on your side the whole time. (laughs) Oh, is that what's happening in the church today? That's the reason I told you that, because I believe there are so many people that are playing games with the enemy. We're really on his side. We're not on God's side. We've got to get our lives cleaned up and pure before the Lord. We can't play games with the enemy. You can't walk in, in this, uh, this world's temptations and sin and, and uh, uh, ungodliness and walk in the power of God. You may still be a believer and dabble, but you're asking for problems. You're asking, you're opening the door for the demonic realm to come in and oppress you in some way. Now, and by no means, I do not want anybody to think that because people are going through problems or sickness or any kind of issue, that it's because they have sin in their life. I'm not saying that. I would never say that. We have an enemy, and we're fighting against this enemy. And he does his best to oppress people in any way he can. I just don't want you to, uh, to allow him or give him uh, inroads into your life. All right, the wilds, uh, the methods. The NIV Bible calls it strategies. Uh, so if people prepare for battle properly, I believe we will be able to stand against the trickery, the methods, the strategies, the schemes that the enemy has devised for us. Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I give unto you power to tra- tread on serpents. He's talking about demonic forces and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Praise God for the power that we have. We can tread on that enemy. All right. Just don't open the door. I believe it is extremely important that the gifts of the Spirit are flowing in the body of Christ. I believe it is necessary for us in these end days as believers in Christ to be able to access the power of the Holy Spirit, so that we will have words of wisdom, words of knowledge, uh, tongues, interpretation, that we will, will be able to walk with the power of healing and, and miracles and deliverance. But, but this discernment that we need to have as believers, it needs to be in operation in our lives. We need to be able to have words of, of wisdom and knowledge so that when we're dealing with supernatural forces, we get something from God. We get a download from, from the throne of God on what to do and how to do it. Let me give you an example. And uh, I'm probably going to wrap things up this morning with this. I got so much more that I want to talk about. But um, hallelujah. Yeah, I could go on for hours. But don't want to do that. So recently, we had a couple come to us and said that they felt like they were being oppressed by the devil, the enemy, the, not the devil, but uh, demonic forces. And they gave us several uh, scenarios of things that had happened in their life and in their home. And so after talking with them, I, I agreed. Um, yeah, that probably is a demonic force. So I ask uh, Tony and Todd to pray and fast with us, with me and Tammy, and prepare for uh, this encounter that we were going to have with these people. And we did that, prayed and fast for, uh, it was what, about three days? 
we prayed and fast, and then we came together, and we started dealing with the, this, the, these demonic forces. I first started uh, ministering to the man, and I, I was took authority over the the uh, force, the the demonic entity, and uh, was casting it out in the name of Jesus Christ. Now. You know, I know you've probably seen all kinds of things. You've heard people do uh, um, do deliverance openly. Uh, sometimes it becomes theatrical. Uh, I don't like that because I just believe the power of God. I recently had somebody say to me, tell me that they had a manifestation in the uh, in a service. They're Christian, a believer that had a manifestation in, the, in a service. And it surprised them. They didn't know where it was coming from. And the person, the, the minister just walked up to them and said something like, if I remember what they said, said something like this, uh, devil, uh, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is here and I command you to come out in the name of Jesus. Boom. That's all it took. All right, I'm giving you examples, real examples of things that, that have happened. Okay, let's go back. Let me get back to this situation. I was ministering to him. No manifestation of any spirit or anything, no growling or, or coughing or hacking or anything that people say is going to happen. And, and sometimes different things happen. We read in Scripture there was manifestation of spirits. In one place, uh, in a couple places, they actually spoke to Jesus. Uh, and, and Jesus told them to shut up and come out in the name of Jesus. Or yeah, by his power. We, do, we use the name of Jesus because it's the power that we know is the name above all names. As I was ministering to this guy, you know, I, I, it just felt like we wasn't getting a breakthrough. And, uh, you know, I asked him how, how he was feeling. He said, oh, you know, okay, better. But then, for some reason, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and, and told me to, ha- to turn it over to Tony to minister to the woman. And, that, and I did. I just, you know, that's why words of knowledge, words of wisdom, supernatural discernment is so important in times like this. I turned it over to Tony, and Tony began ministering to the woman. As she ministered to the woman, she hit on a, an issue or something that was hidden, that the enemy had, was hiding in this person's life. And she ministered to that issue and cast that force out. When she did that, not only was the lady delivered, but the man was also set free as well. It was a complete deliverance in their family. Wow. You know, uh, this message is going to get a lot of criticism. (laughs) I want you to know that. (laughs) Be prepared. If somebody saw this on uh, on our streaming, um, you and they disagree, you're you're probably going to hear about it. Bethel, we're going to hear about it in our community. It's okay. It's all right. I can tell you this. Let me give you one more, and I'm going to stop with this. One more situation that I've been in, because we're going to pick up next week, and we're going to talk more about tactics and and what's going on. But one more situation that happened in my particular life uh, in regards to a, a demonic force. A man came to me. A man that was a believer in Jesus Christ. But he said that he had this overwhelming desire to do something. And I'm not going to share that, uh, what that was. And as I talked to him, I, I really believed that he had a demonic force. So I began to minister to him on that level. Casting that force out, it did manifest. It, it, it spoke uh, spoke in a very deep and uh, disturbing type voice and said that, you know, it was, that was its home and it wasn't coming out. And I disagreed in the name of Jesus. It was coming out. And uh, we dealt with this for quite a while. And, uh, you know, there wasn't any huge uh, m- deliverance or 
anything beyond that manifestation that I had. But finally, he, he just kind of came to his senses and he, he said, you know, I feel better now. You know, it wasn't like, wow, I'm free. So I, you know, said, okay, so let it go at that. I didn't see this guy. Now, first of all, you got to understand, this guy came from a church and a denomination that did not believe in what just took place. Therefore, for him to acknowledge that there was some kind of entity uh, oppressing him would cause that church and the people that he uh, associated with to look down upon him. Therefore, you know, he, and he was, he was heavily involved in this denomination. So, uh, you know, this is something that he, he definitely didn't want people to know about. Uh, but the thing is, when, when people are desperate and they know that they need to be set free, they will find somebody that believes in it and will you know, help them be free. So anyhow, about a, a few months, it may have been a year later, uh, I happened to see this guy. And he, he came over to me and he said, listen, I just want you to know that after you prayed for me, um, I began, I, I just felt, felt free. I started reading my Bible more. I started praying. I started attending church regularly. He said, my life has been different ever since then. Now, I'll tell you this. Listen, it's not me. It's not Rob Barber. I, I, I don't like dealing with that stuff. Uh, I, I don't, I'd rather not. I'd rather, you know, I, I just want people, I want people to receive Jesus Christ and let Jesus do all the cleansing, you know? That's awesome. But as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I have to preach the whole gospel and share the truth of the word of God with, with his people. So today, I, I've shared these things with you because I want you to know there is a, there is a force all around us. It's a, it's a different dimension. And those forces are able to manifest in and out of our dimension, and sometimes they afflict human beings. Human beings need to be set free from that. And in the name of Jesus Christ, the power of the blood of Jesus will set the captives free. Amen? Captives do not have to be bound up. Chains. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, what you need to do is go to the Scripture and see if what I'm telling you could very well be true. Because I, I don't want you to just take my word for this. I want you to know what the Word of God says. And my, part of my purpose in sharing these things with you is this is a warning. Don't open. Do not allow yourselves, yourself to be involved with things that can open the door for the demonic realm to come in and oppress your family. Oppress you and your family. It's a diff- not difficult enough battle as it is. We don't want to play games with the enemy. Stand with me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If you'd like to have prayer this morning, I want to ask you to, to come forward. We will pray with you, believe in God's healing power. We continue. I'm going to tell, ask everyone to continue to pray for Susie. In fact, let's stop right now and pray for her. Father God, we lift Susie up to you. Uh, we, do, we, we don't have the answer for, for what's taking place, what's happening, but we believe you're still, you are a healer. You have told us that, uh, that we can pray and ask and believe, Father, and you will do a mighty work. And together, these, the, this congregation is believing for your work to take place in Susie's body. In the name of Jesus Christ, that this uh, 
infection will be gone in Jesus' name. That there will be supernatural healing take place in her body, in her kidney, in her foot, in her, uh, in every part of her body, Father God. You will move through her right now in the name of Jesus as we believe and pray that your power will be released on her. Touch her, Father God, and we thank you for touching Kenny, strengthening him, Father. Encourage him. Encourage Bill and Joanne, Lord God. Lift them up to you. Touch them, Lord. Glory. That your power will be released in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If you'd like to have prayer, please, please come up.